Barr is a professor at UC Davis and renowned tendon training researcher and expert. Over the past 15 years, Professor Barr has worked with elite athletes and as a scientific advisor to sports organizations, including Chelsea Football Club, USA Track and Field, and the Denver Broncos. Professor Barr's lab's research interests are muscle hypertrophy, muscular endurance, and ligament engineering. Dr. Barr, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today uh, on Modern Healthspan. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. So, uh, so Dr. Barr, you run a lab in UC Davis where you're looking at um, health and muscles and, and exercise. So can you introduce what your, yourself and what your lab is working on? And I understand that you know, connective tissue is, is one of the things that you are looking at. Um, and I think uh, that's probably understudied or under, understood by our audience. And so it'd be great if you could uh, talk about that a little bit. Okay, sure. So, so again, uh, I'm a professor of molecular exercise physiology at the University of California, Davis. And what my laboratory does is we study um, how diet, nutrition, and age affect our uh, musculoskeletal system. And recently we've gotten into some other um, interesting aspects of of everything from um, how to, whether you can grow um, meat in a, in a laboratory. And also we're looking at how uh, adjusting your muscle function actually has a knock-on effect on the brain. So we're looking at specifically how a ketogenic diet is affecting um, models of Alzheimer's disease and neurocognitive ability, but we're not looking at it in a brain centric manner, we're looking at it from the muscle side because what's happening, um, what we find so far is that our muscles are changing and as our muscles change, they can adapt the global environment to make it a better environment for your neurocognitive ability. And that's something we've known a lot about, about exercise that it improves neurocognitive function. And so now we're understanding a little bit about how that's happening. So, so again, my laboratory looks at how the musculoskeletal system works together. So that means it looks at muscles, but it also looks at, at all of these connective tissues, as you said. So, so there are all kinds of connective tissues in our body. So the easiest, the easiest way to look at it is if I take um, any of my musculoskeletal system, that means my muscles, my bones, my tendons, my ligaments, my cartilage, all of those things are really built up of this extracellular matrix. In a tendon, the extracellular matrix makes up about 80% of the whole tissue. So if you look at the tissue mass, 80% of it is made up of, of um, extracellular matrix protein. And when we look at a muscle, by contrast, it's only about 5%, two to two and a half to five percent of the muscle. Um, but it's a really important component. And as well in bone, because a bone we think of our bones as these hard, these hard materials made up of calcium phosphate that we think of almost like a cement, but it's more like um, it's or like a concrete, but it's more like a cement where it has these the iron girders that you would see going into this composite material that you would say build a bridge from. In our bodies, that's extracellular matrix protein, so that's collagen protein, and then you put in all of this mineral around it to give the bone the strength and the stiffness that it needs. So all of these different tissues are built on this foundation of this matrix. And what we know is that the matrix is really important to how the tissues function. So there was a recent paper that came out that showed that if you do an increase in load on a muscle, and we've seen the same thing, that the connective tissue or the matrix within the muscle actually increases faster than the muscle protein itself. So you think of muscle and you think of the motor proteins, like in your steak, that red meaty bit, that's the myosin and the actin. Those are the proteins that are gonna cause the muscle to shorten. But those proteins don't work very well unless you have a really good matrix around them. Uh, so we're in Davis, we're about two hours from Lake Tahoe, California, where there's beautiful snow this time of year. And the nice thing about Lake Tahoe is the snow is really fluffy and really light. So, you know, when we get an inch of rain, they get over a foot of snow in the mountains because it's just really got lots of air in it. And that's wonderful for powder skiing, but if you fall and you try and get up and you push down on that powder, you're not gonna move. And the same thing is true if you've got a muscle that's got lots of 
motor proteins, lots of these proteins that cause contraction. But if the matrix isn't good and it's pulling on something that's like that fluffy snow, you're not going to be able to produce any force. So you need the matrix, and the matrix is really essential to our ability to produce force. Right. So I, there was, um, so you mentioned bone in there. So that is also something that I'm interested in. Actually, but before we go there, so in terms of exercising and building, strengthening the, this uh, connective tissue, is there a special, like a different regimen than you would use for building muscle? Uh, it doesn't look like there's a dramatic difference. Oh. It will respond differently to different exercises. We know that. So if we were to just do resistance or heavy weightlifting exercise, we know that within the first four to eight hours, you're going to see this really nice increase in collagen synthesis within the muscle. Um, and so we're already seeing that very quickly after our exercise. And, and we can support that using some dietary um, interventions like when we use dietary collagen, the reason that that's beneficial to the matrix is because the matrix, our collagen matrix that, we, that we're that we trying to build, about a third of the amino acids in that matrix is our glycine, another third are proline. And after exercise, even though glycine is not a uh, an essential amino acid, after heavy intense exercise or after we injure ourselves, it appears that glycine becomes a conditionally essential amino acid, which means that at those periods of time after exercise or after injury, the glycine became, can become rate limiting for our ability to synthesize new collagen. So we can do our exercise, our heavy weightlifting type exercise, that's gonna increase collagen synthesis. And then if you supply nutrients that have specific amino acids like glycine, um, proline and other essential uh, other amino acids that are enriched in collagen you see that the ability to increase collagen synthesis increases even more excellent and i must be definitely on our list to talk about um but yeah so let me go back to my my other question so uh do you also look at bone health and how to maintain uh bone density particularly as you get older i mean yeah do we don't any? specifically look at that, but that mm -hmm. it goes back to your last question. Your last question was, do we exercise differently for our connective tissues? Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely true that we do. And I was I, I was remiss to, to not mention this, that our bones, our tendons and our ligaments, they respond unlike our muscles. Our muscles, if we go out and we go for a three hour run, mm -hmm. and not something that I normally do, but if you go out and you go for a really long run, your heart and your skeletal muscles that are involved in that exercise are continuously adapting. The longer you go, every single second you're out there, you're getting a signal for those muscles in your heart to get bigger and stronger and to not necessarily bigger and stronger, but to be better at producing energy and to work more efficiently. The interesting thing is our connective tissues like our bones, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage, they'll respond to the first 10 minutes of exercise, but then they'll start shutting down. And those cells don't respond, um, even if you continue to exercise, the cells get no further benefit from the exercise. So after about a 10 minute bout of exercise, your connective tissues are no longer interested. I, I tell my students, it's like having a teenager at home. Um, you'll, you maybe get a few words in where they'll, they'll listen to you for a couple, three, four words, but if you go on and you try and tell them something that's gonna last a long time, you're still talking, but they're not getting the message. And, and so it's very similar to that, where what you need to do in those situations is you need to give them a short, a short little message. Okay, they can get that short little message and then give them some time where you're not giving them any messages anymore. And then you give them another short message. And from our work in ligament and from other, from Ravlin and Burr's work in bone, what we know is that the best way to increase bone mineral density is to do very short periods of activity up to, you know, even up as little as 40 loads. And then it take about six to eight hours where you're not loading, do another 40 loads, six to eight hours, 40 loads. Um, the, the minimum amount of exercise that I've seen to have a positive effect on bone was a Japanese study where they had um, young, young girls who jumped as high as they could. And I think they did it five times a day, three days a week. So there were only five loads a day, three mm -hmm. times a week, and they saw an increase in bone mineral density. And so what we're looking to do for our bones is we're looking again to do these short periods of activity, 
that last as little as 40 jumps. If you jump as high as you can and you do that 20 to 40 times, that's all you need for your bone to get an adaptive response, at least your bone from your lower body. Excellent. Thank you. Well, give that a try. That's fine. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.